On this week's episode, we are going to be naturally dyeing with lobster mushrooms and the color shifting you can get when you play around with pH. Lobster mushrooms tend to grow in the fall here on the west coast of North America. Now, it might surprise you to know this, but when we talk about lobster mushrooms, it's actually two fungi. There's a russula base, which is the white mushroom inside, and then it's this orange, or sometimes pink or purple, mushroom on top called Hypomyces lactiflorum that is the dyer. So the first step is going to be separating this outer shell from the inner mushroom. That inner mushroom, if it goes in the dye pot, um, can absorb color. So we're really just looking for that outer shell. Now, as you can see, these lobster mushrooms have seen better days. It's the end of the season and we've just had a big rainfall. So you get this uh, tertiary, I guess, fungi growing on top. But they're not, so they're not good for eating anymore, but they're certainly good for dying still. So I'm harvesting them from out in the woods. You find them in a lot of mixed forests, I often on the edge, edge habitat um, with deciduous and carnivorous trees um, during the fall season. So I've been out foraging today in one of my usual lobster spots. And as you can see, there's been a lot of very rapid rain and that has allowed sort of the secondary white fungus to um, take over. But because we're not eating these, these are gonna be for dying, um, it should be okay. So I'm just gonna strip off. You can see here, we've got some of that deeper purple happening. You can see this is when the pH starts to increase because of rotting, you get that color difference. So after you've done your harvesting, it's time to process. Now with these, not only are they slimy, but they can um, make your skin on your hands feel a bit rough. So I tend to use gloves and then a small sharp knife and you're basically peeling them almost like a potato sort of, but sort of like a squishy slimy potato. And all you're trying to do is get off that outer layer as well as you can. Um, one of the things with lobster mushrooms is that the russula, which is the inside mushroom, usually grows in a typical mushroom shape with the cap. But once it has this secondary um, orange fungus on top of it, it sort of changes its shape. So you're trying to get that outside and then there's almost like a bowl or trumpet shape on top. Um, and that's a little bit tricky. You kind of want to use a smaller knife um, and then just do your best to get as much of that kind of that inner white part because that's the part that if it goes in the dye pot, um, it tends to wick up some of the color. Um, and so if you're wanting deeper colors, you just wanna separate them. It takes a bit of work. Now the payoff of all of this work is you're gonna end up with these lovely slices, either fresh or dried um, that you can go ahead and dye with. And if you have a high enough ratio, usually between what's the ratio of one to one to two to one. So that's one pound of mushrooms to one pound of fiber or two pounds of mushrooms to one pound of fiber. Now, once you are done your peeling, you can then, I usually lay them flat in a Ziploc bag if you don't have your dehydrator handy. Um, and then I put them in the freezer until I'm ready to dry them or just go ahead and dye with them fresh. Now, in general, I tend to use my dehydrator because, or else I just run out of room in my freezer. I'm not gonna go too far in depth in how to dye with them because I have another video I can put a description below. But roughly speaking, I use a two to one ratio, so twice the weight of mushrooms, dried mushrooms, to fiber. I, uh, here they are dehydrated. I add them to water. I let them simmer, not boil, but simmer for an hour. Um, I then filter out the pieces using whatever method you'd like. And then I go ahead and dye with them. But here's where you can shift the pH. So the pH is the measure of how acidic or basic something is. Um, and I tend to use pH paper or strips in order to watch that. So you can make it more acidic, which is dropping your pH using household vinegar. And then you can increase your pH using, using washing soda, also known as soda ash. Um, I don't use baking soda because it tends to bind up and give you 
uh, splotchy results. Um, you can use both of those. So if you're using acid, once you get down into sort of the five pH of five, it gives it gives quite an orange. Oh, Here we are with some purple, silk. As you can see, this is kind of a neutral into the that. sort of slightly acidic is going to give you this orange. Now, as we increase, I up until a pH of about 10, it can get into the purples. And if you do a system called buffering, which is a little bit more than this video is going to get into, uh, you can even get into the red. So at about a pH of 8.5, you're going to give reds. Well, Above a, that, a, here we are with some silk. Um, I was dying with some natural dyers from Taiwan. Um, and they were using lobster mushrooms as eco printing. And as you can see, there's the mushroom and it gave this lovely rich purple, um, sort of very warm purple, and now it's just it's good with that pH increase. So I generally use about a quarter teaspoon of washing soda at a time, give it a stir, and then watch it. You don't want to go above a ten because it's just too hard on your fiber. So here we go. So this is the pH reading of about four to five. Here is our orange, as you can see. And then I have another example of a pH strip. Now it's up into 10. And then that 10 gave us this color. So as you can see, you can either shift yarn or you can use it in different ways to eco print, kind of depending on whatever your project is. But you get a lot of color range with this mushroom, which is the really exciting part. So there's something else unique about dyeing with lobster mushrooms that you don't get with a lot of other things. And that's things uh, from nature that do shift with pH or the color shifts with pH. That color will eventually settle. And lobster mushrooms just don't seem to do that. Their color seems to be infinitely able to shift. So this was yarn, this purple yarn. I dyed with it, I would say, six months ago. And here is another little small sample that I put into some diluted vinegar and it went brown. It just seems like it never actually settles. I hope that you can use this information on your own fiber projects and the living color you can get from lobster mushrooms. Thank you everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more dye videos.